Good day all. Uh, I hope you all are safe and sound. The last uh, where we had uh, stopped a lecture was regarding the interaction of the ships in a narrow channel. So we will continue with that. Before I do that, I would again request you to please come back to me on your feedback and please do not forget to like or subscribe my YouTube channel by the name of Marine Quest Solutions. Same thing is there on the Facebook as well. Okay, gentlemen, coming to the point, we had talked about the effect this VHCC will experience in a narrow channel followed by this mid-sized tanker and subsequently by the small vessel. What we discussed in the last lecture that because of the bigger underwater volume of displacement of this vessel, these two vessels will experience a kind of a virtual drag towards the bigger vessel. And it is also subject to the depth of the water, the width, the squat, what we discussed earlier. Also, the governing factor is the speed. The speed of transit of these three vessels. More the speed, more the effect of squat, and more the effect of cushioning and banking. Why? Because the water capacity in the channel is limited or restricted. The water to fill up the void will take some time and because of that the vacuum will be created. Now we'll see how, how does that work. On this particular vessel which we said it's a VNCC, the vessel number one. On the forward part we see a big separation because this is a high pressure area and on the after part the pressure is getting restricted, low pressure area. Because of this particular aspect, because it's a high pressure area, the vessel's bow gets pushed out from the bank towards the center of the channel or away from the bank. And conversely speaking, the stern will experience an opposite effect. The stern getting sucked into the channel. One is because of the gradient of the pressure, the difference in the pressure, differential pressure between the bow and the stern. And there is certain element of venturi effect which is also created, by virtue of which a suction effect takes place. So, this vessel will have a very tough time to get to steer her ship until such time she abides by two factors. One is reduce the speed. Number two, as depicted over here, she will have to give a counter helm to port that will not only help us to go against the pressure but also keep the stern away from the bank of the river. <clears throat> Coming to those aspects, of course, we do also know the velocity, viscosity, density and the water pressure. <coughs> These are the main ingredients of the squat and the hydrodynamics. The, what is happening in this particular case, the restricted water flow which is over here. Here the pressure is high, so the pressure, uh, the water pressure is high, so it's flow, flowing faster. But it is getting constricted somewhere here. <coughs> if I draw this something like as a, what you can see the blue line as a kind of a pipeline, the pressure over here in this sector, in this segment is high, the pressure is low here, the suction is taking place and because of which she is having a very tough time for steer. And because of that the water, uh, the bow is getting pushed away from the bank and the stern is getting sucked towards the bank. And <coughs> Coming to these two vessels, the vessel number three will have a horrific time because of the virtual drawing uh, towards a bigger vessel because of the underwater volume of displacement and number two vessel <coughs> will, have a, will have an equal effect 
of getting drawn towards the stern or the quarter of this vessel because of the underwater volume of the displacement and the vacuum which is created. So, <clears throat> when we talk about the bow and cushioning effect, there will be a cushion effect if, uh, experienced by the vessel at the bow. That is on this vessel. Same thing has been even depicted over here, the vessel number 2, which is over here. <coughs> Besides getting her, uh, uh, her drawn virtually towards the bigger vessel, because I have <coughs> re replicated these two things over here. The cushioning effect of the bow is pushing this vessel, that same vessel which I have redrawn here. <coughs> the, vessel num the vessel number 2 is getting pushed towards the center of the channel and the bow is getting sucked towards the back. So, the bow cushioning effect has two components. One is because of the high pressure at the bow followed by the low pressure and there is a kind of a venturi which is created over here. The draft also is a major component. Right now I have shown the component of the lateral thing how it works. Of course, <coughs> because of this, as we explained in one of our last lectures, the pivot point or the pivot axis also plays a major role. Like in this particular, particular case, because of the high pressure, the vessel is moving ahead, the pivot point will be approximately one third of the length from the bow. And because the vessel is swinging to starboard because of the high pressure here area and the fulcrum is created which is even aggravating this effect for the bow to get sucked in towards the back. Same thing we can see here. <coughs> the vessel is getting pushed laterally towards the center. At the same time the pivot point is here and the fulcrum is created as you can see depicted from the arrows. It's like a tug push. It's like a tug push where it is reciprocated by bow turning to port in this particular case and stern getting sucked towards the back. And the arrows have been as you can see opposite. So now as far as this particular vessel is concerned, this one has a lesser displacement lesser underwater water volume of displacement, she is drawing, she has got a lesser draft, lesser dead weight, lesser displacement because of which she though is getting sucked into this vessel faster than she is getting the bow or cushioning effect over here for two reasons. Number one, she is a bit away from the bank with respect to this ship and this ship. So the water which is passing from here is, not, is, is of course the vacuum is created. But the restriction of the water, the constriction of the water is not much as compared to the constriction or the restriction of the water what can be cited in these two particular cases. Therefore, when we talk about the bow and cushioning effect, the main thing is if the vessel is close to the, bow, to the bank of the channel, subject to her draft, subject to her underwater volume of displacement, she will encounter equal amount of effect which is going to be directly proportional to the draft, to the UKC and the speed and also what we discussed in our previous lectures. This being a tanker, <coughs> the block coefficient of this vessel is going to be more than 0.7 by virtue of which she is tipping to, towards the bow. And because she is tipping towards the bow, there is an external force which is created because of the change in the underwater volume of displacement and there will be a virtual change of buoyancy as well. Because the center of gravity is constant and same. But because the vessel is tipping by the bow due to the squat effect, there will be a virtual change of the center of buoyancy because of which she will get a double whammy kind of effect. And there is a possibility if the UKC is not very, uh, uh, is large enough, she may probably smell the ground or touch the bottom. The things, what, what we have under control in this case or in this case, number one, 
is to reduce the speed because the speed, speed factor is the main. Once the speed is re uh, reduced and the helm is given towards the bar, towards the bank, like in this case, the helm has to be given to the port to pull the stern out. In this case, the helm has to be given to the starboard to pull the bank out. Coming to a <coughs> conclusion, the thing is reduce the speed, give the helm towards the bank so that you do not sit on the bank or run aground. At the same time, talking about the UKC, what you may have, because once you reduce the speed, the UKC automatically starts increasing gradually. And if it is not done, you will experience a sudden shear, the vessel join vibrations, all because of the suction effect which is taking place. I stop over here. Before that, I'll revise the subject. In the restricted water, what happens? The restriction of flow of the water at the bank, which we have seen here, the velocity increases and the pressure reduces. The velocity increases over here. The pressure reduces. Here, the pressure is high. The pressure is high, velocity is high, here the pressure reduces, the velocity increases and eventually effect takes place. <coughs> Same time what we experience is drop of water level at the bank. Because of these effects, the drop of water level at the bank takes place due to the suction effect, due to the draft and the void created by the underwater volume of displacement of the vessel. And as we spoke earlier, apply the helm towards the bank and reduce the speed. These are the only two things what we can do. These are the only things what we can do to stay clear of the bank due to bow and cushioning effect. I thank you all. Thank you.